Welcome to the first episode of Syntox, a podcast which explores the field of synthetic biology. This is a student-run podcast, is organized by the iGen Toronto team, an undergraduate research team hosted at the University of Toronto, focusing on scientific research in the field of synthetic biology. My name is Amy, and I am the president of iGen Toronto this year, and the host of today's episode. I am joined here today with members of our, of our executive research and development team, our team leads Dan, Carlos, and Kai, and we will be discussing the inspiration and goals of this year's 2019 iGen Toronto's project. First, I would like to introduce to our listeners our wonderful guests. Uh, my name is Carlos, so I'm the dry lab lead of this year. Uh, I'm finishing second year doing a specialist in physics and mathematics, uh, particularly interested in the intersection between physics, math, and biology, and that's why I'm here, right? Um, hello, I'm Kai. I'm the PMP lead for this year. Um, I am double majoring in ethics, society, and law and criminology with a minor in bioethics. Um, yeah, I guess it's my minor in bioethics that's made me want to join iGen. Hey guys, it's Dan. Um, I'm the wet lab lead for this year, and I just finished my third year in cell biology and molecular genetics. That's great. Well, thank you all for those little introductions. And so to get you to get to know you folks like a little bit better with our audience here, what are your particular interests or research interests? I really like uh, clinical genetics. So I think that's a very like um, ignored part of medicine sometimes. So I'm looking forward to uh, entering the field of medicine and kind of combining it with my undergrad. Um, so I'm really excited because um, using criminology and bioethics, I get to consider like the applied ethics of um, the field of like the criminal justice system. I'm particularly interested in um, like the ethics of privatizing the criminal justice system. So that's what I'll be working on in third year. Well, in my case, it's mostly curiosity because I would really like to get more into like more theoretical science, like pure math, pure physics, but it's like kind of a hobby, I think, that I just decided one day, well, let's do something different, and that's how I end up here, looking at bio, I, I don't know anything about bio, last time I took one, one course was back in high school, like tens of thousands of years ago, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm really interested in this intersection and what kind of interesting questions I could get out of this, of this field. Like, I'm kind of leading into what you were kind of saying, so like an understanding that you kind of all have different academic backgrounds and different fields of study and like your general interests all together, why did you decide to join iGEM in particular? Because, I mean, there's a ton of other things you can do, especially here at the University of Toronto. So what made you so interested or what piqued your interest in iGEM in and of itself? So originally, when I applied to this, I was just looking to be like a normal guy, you know, like just one of these monkeys behind the computer, like just programming this stuff. Uh, nothing more than that, just doing kind of like research or something close to that. And, well, I was honestly just looking for something different. Like, after two years of only looking at numbers, only looking at damn letters in front of you all the, all the whole day, you kind of want something different, right? So that's how I end up here and how I end up in, in another project. Um, and basically, at least for me, it's, it's just a source of inspiration. To me, like I know that it's pretentious, like it's like like a high topic, like I don't know, so it just yeah, exactly. But I was, I was basically looking for a place to get new ideas from. Um, for me, I really like the opportunity that I've had to work like directly with people from other fields. Um, like I like jumping in when you guys are talking about things and like kind of keeping things um, in check, like ethically as a humanities major. Um, I think it's also like a really good opportunity for me to like learn things that I wouldn't learn in the classroom um, that are just like way out of what I'm studying. So I think that's really a cool opportunity. Um, coming from like a molecular genetics background, I wouldn't say iGEM is really like far off from what all my other peers are doing, but I guess I decided to join because it's a very interesting and unique opportunity at the University of Toronto to really like engage in your own research and be a part of it like the entire decision making process and more of the research and development. Whereas I feel like if I was just helping somebody in their lab, uh, which is what a lot of my peers are doing right now, I wouldn't get that hands on experience. And I think it's really cool to be a, be a part of like all of those stages. And I, and I guess maybe to give our listeners a little bit more of a background as to what 
iGEM actually is, because oh, yeah. um, maybe yeah. there are a lot of people who are listening right now who don't know what it is, and that's totally fine. Um, using my position as president, obviously speaking, no, I'm joking, but um, personally for me, I've been on this team for the past three, th- three? three years now, um, and what iGEM is, is it's a foundation that has started out from MIT actually back in 2003, for a little, uh, for a little history there. And it started off as a synthetic biology course, but what has turned into is an international event. Basically, a bunch of teams from around the world do synthetic biology projects. We come together and we present them. And so iGEM Toronto is one of those over 300 international teams. Um, But one thing that makes us very unique, I guess, from others is that all of our work coming down from the designing to the execution of the project itself is developed and put together by undergraduate students. So unlike other labs where you would have professors or grad students kind of leading on undergrad or other volunteer students to telling them what to do, all of this is done by the, our group of undergrad students. And we as iGEM Toronto have a team of about 30 individuals. What like inspired the team this year to choose the project that we had? And I guess maybe one of you can start off by explaining you know, what we're actually doing this year as a project. All right, I'll, I'll hit them with the project. <laughs> uh, so basically what we're working on, there was a uh, there was an enzyme discovered in a bacteria a couple of years back uh, in Idionella sacaensis, and it's um, an enzyme that essentially cuts and takes apart PET plastics into its uh, basically smaller pieces. So... This bacteria is out there living in garbage dumps, eating plastic and using it as a fuel source, which I think is so cool for evolution to do that. Um, And what we're trying to do this year is to improve its thermostability and improve its efficiency so we can uh, use this enzyme and put it into E. coli and um, use it in a more hands-on, more understandable chassis of a bacteria so we could... uh, hopefully apply that in more of a commercial setting. So I guess what the project was inspired by was like the huge amount of plastic pollution um, that we're currently um, dealing with. At least for the dry lab, it's more a topic of what kind of cool stuff we can actually do with this thing to make it even cooler, right? Which at the end of the day, is that's, that's one of the points of synthetic biology, right? We want to take something that is just out there and make something cooler out of it, right? Um, and for us, it's been like a, a really nice experience of basically uh, dealing with people from our backgrounds, right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how we started this project. And I mean, like, that's the one of the many ways that projects are developed in general is that you have a big discussion with a bunch of people. Well, really, it's your PI, but in this case, we, no PI, all students, um, sitting in a room, arguing. And so kind of, I mean, jumping into the next question then is like, so obviously this, this this idea that we have right now, dealing with the PETAs and optimizing it to help degrade plastics, um, wasn't the only idea that we had. I mean, I remember in our R&D meetings, we would have a bunch of other ideas. So how did we come to a conclusion of figuring out what project to do? Like, what, what really drove you guys to this idea? I think that um, there's a lot of opportunity for PMP with this project especially. Like, um, if we do take it in a commercial... Um, direction or like even just like the fact that it is like a very tangible problem that we're solving um, and also that there are like very tangible like environmental effects we would have to think about when dealing with something that's um, going to be put into the environment potentially. So I think that's one of the main things is it's been a very easy and like fun thing for the PMP team to take on. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that kind of sets me up in a good position because what I was going to say is like the project is very uniformly shared between like the computational um, and hands-on laboratory as well as like the bioethics side so I think it presents the whole iGEM Toronto team with an excellent opportunity to share work um, and really like bounce ideas off of each other um, and know that different parts of the project depend on each other whereas um, some projects were more weighted towards computational modeling some were more weighted towards cloning in the lab um, so I think this is really, really good for all of us. Yeah, and, and another interesting point to mention is that, well, that's a bit more technical, but the approach that we are taking is highly computational, right? But at the end of the day, the person that push a lot for this project, and shout out to Victoria, right? Yeah. Uh, shout out to Victoria, probably she will be here in some other time, I don't know about yeah. that, but 
She's a wet lab person, right? Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, when she was proposing all these ideas, she always comes up with ideas. Uh, when she was proposing this, she knew that it would be like, maybe computationally speaking, the, maybe not necessarily the primary topic, but it was a huge topic, right? It's a huge part of the project, but she being part of the wet labs, it was, at least in my, in my opinion, it was really interesting how she could actually fit everything together such that even if it seems com almost computational, at least at this point, it's still a mix of things, right? To interject really quickly here, because I realized I didn't explain what iGEM was very well when I was doing my little explanation earlier. iGEM is composed of three different sub-teams, at least iGEM Toronto is, and the way we break it down is we have our laboratory component, which we call our wet lab team, and then we have our computational mathematic component, which is our dry lab team. But it is also something we, we look into is the bioethics and the social implications of our computational modeling and our, and our laboratory work, which is our policies and practices team. The reason why we have these three sub teams is not only to follow the rules and regulations that the iGEM competition holds, but it also allows us to give a more holistic view in science, which isn't often done at all within the lab. Um, and so that I think is the beauty of what iGEM allows us to do and what iGEM Toronto has set up for our students. And so like kind of jumping back in then to um, how we have kind of been able to decide on a project, you know, start designing it. And right now we're in the midst of, you know, executing a lot of our little projects. So what are like the major goals, you know, that we're hoping to accomplish with the project as a whole per sub team, like go ahead and shout out. At least the idea that you can sell to people uh, is to eventually get these bacterium to the point where you can actually produce this enzyme and degrade all the plastic in the world. Right? Like we would love to put it just in, you know, like just throw it in the ocean, let it do its stuff, get everything happy, get everybody happy with no plastic, etc. Right? Like that would be the, the super cool idea. Um, but it, like at the end of the day, it doesn't work like that, right? So at least for the dry lab right now, the idea is we would like to get it better than what the literature says it can be, right? So for example, if the literature says, well, it can for example, degradation, let's say that it can degrade a kilogram of plastic in two days, we would like to get it done in a day and a half. And that's the kind of mentality that we are using for all of these aspects, at least from the dry lab perspective. So when dry lab designs these uh, modifications to the proteins, at least for the time being, I feel like wet lab are just like the lackeys that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They, they give us work to do and then we do it and then we come back to them with results and then they interpret those results and make changes and we just go really back and forth. Uh, describe one project that you're really excited to do and like the hopes and dreams that are coming out of it. Um, well, PMP is hoping to do an art gala. That'll be our main thing, hopefully this September. Um, we want to have an art gala that's um, the same way that we are, inspired by the plastic problem. Um, so we're hoping to collab with a bunch of schools from across Toronto and the GTA and have um, like a room full of art that represents like plastic or single use products um, and then show our showcase our project there um, kind of to demonstrate the way that like this is a problem that we want to tackle and that like we're very wrapped up in this problem that this problem is more than just like an experiment to us or just a CV builder or something like that that we recognize the actual real implications of this and that it is something that we're very passionate about. So why choose an art gala over um, other mediums or, or medias? I think the gala is nice because it's very like multidisciplinary. Yeah. It kind of embodies iGEM as an organization I mean, in an yeah. event. Like I know that sounds super like woke. Right, like there, it'll be an opportunity for like to raise awareness in a not uh, necessarily a not scientific case. Yeah. Right? Because the fact if we say, like if we just say we're making a bacteria that eats plastic, all the science geeks are going to freak out about that. Yeah. Um, and as much as I would not hope so the for the humanities to freak out about that, like it sounds cool, but there's only so much enthusiasm that can come from people who don't really understand the implications of that. Yeah. Um, so I think an art gala slash... Um, like an awareness gala is a very nice yeah. way to include anyone and everyone. I also think that including multiple schools across the GTA has been important to us because we've been, like, our project is very focused and, like, our research from the PMP side has been very focused on waste management in Toronto um, in particular and, like, on campuses. So 
I think that's another reason why the art gala is a good medium. I also think the fact that now you're not only informing students about it, but also just the general public. Yeah, my grandparents are coming. That is so (laughs) cool. (laughs) See, we're going to make it happen, guys. Come meet Kai's grandparents. Yeah. More on projects. Dan, Carlos, what are you guys most looking forward to? Yo, I just want I just want this to work, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, here's the no. I, uh, here's the thing. Imagine that you put uh, well, you know this feeling because you are a grad student, right? Yeah. And if you listener are a grad student too, you know that low key you are a slave, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm a slave too, right? Um, so we're totally fine with that. But low key, after working for two months, you want to see results, right? And in our case, at least in the case of Trella, we do have results. But those are kind of like theoretical results, right? Like we ran the computer for a couple of days, got stuff, got grass, got uh, whatever. But we can then know just with that if it's actually a correct result or yeah. not. Right? Biology is very unpredictable. Yeah, it's science, guys. Yeah, exactly. So at least for us, we are literally just hoping that whatever we did to this, it, it actually works, right? Um, it's true that we have our projects in mind, but at least right now, we are just desperate to see what's going what's gonna to happen with these mutations and all this mm-hmm. stuff, right? Also, this is really cool, but um, we're bringing in the original Idianella sapiensis, hopefully, as a control for our experiments. And if we succeed with that, um, we will be the first lab in Canada to use this organism. So I'm pretty excited about that. IGEM Toronto only really works from January to October. So think about trying to run all of this work in less than a year. Normally, a science or research project, you're given about a year to work. But oftentimes, again, those instructions are given to you. You don't have to do much background research prior to it. The, the, it's all, the knowledge is all there. With us, we have to do our own research, design everything, put everything together, actually run the projects, finish it, and then write about it all within like 10 months. So it's crazy what IGEM, can, IGEM Toronto does for a lot of our students and a lot of our alumni have said the same thing and they've learned a lot and I'm hoping that this year is no different and I don't foresee it being any different. And that's it for our first episode of Sin Talks. Thank you for those who are listening. Tune in next time for our next episode with our next set of guests. This is Amy signing off and until next time, bye!